Hey, welcome to the Prime Directive. I'm your host, Jeffigo, and today we're going to discuss another one of Captain Kirk's love interests. In Season 3, Episode 17, we meet Odana, a love interest of Captain James T. Kirk, a citizen of the planet Gideon, which means she's not human, but you can never tell from her appearance. This episode has a dark finish, so let's get to it. Let's review The Mark of Gideon. It starts out with the Captain's log explaining to us about the planet Gideon and how it's still not a member of the Federation because they won't allow a delegation on its soil or any surveillance by ship sensors. Don't you have to be space capable to be a member of the Federation? Wouldn't that solve every problem in this episode? Well, Gideon finally allows one person, Kirk, to beam down and check it out. It's too bad Gideon isn't cleared for general visitation, Mr. Spark. According to the physiocultural reports submitted to the Federation, it's a virtual paradise. I shall be interested in hearing your description, Captain. You won't have long to wait. Kirk beams down and appears back on the ship, except it's empty. His inner monologue starts going since he searched the whole ship. Minutes later, we see Spock, who said only a few minutes has gone by. So either he's exaggerated searching the whole ship, or the Enterprise is much smaller than we thought. This is a game they played for some time, forcing Spock to call Starfleet and the Federation to see how he should proceed in his investigation that's being halted. How often do they actually separate these two? Like, Federation and Starfleet actually making decisions that affect the ship? Has Starfleet honored our request for the reply? They insist the matter must be referred to the Federation. What department? The Bureau of Planetary Treaties. Contact them directly. But I did, Mr. Spock. And they insist that we must go through Starfleet channels. Kirk hears the door open and then sees a pretty O'Donna dancing around blissfully of her surroundings. She says she doesn't know how she got there, that she was crowded with people and could barely breathe, and then suddenly she was on the ship. Kirk takes her to the bridge and sees that the view screen shows them that they're traveling at warp. O'Donna doesn't seem to know what Gideon is. She's either lying or just really uneducated. Both are possibilities. Spock talks to the ambassador who says he did a thorough search and Kirk is not on the planet. Also, octagons are in fashion on Gideon. The crew is infuriated with the council not letting Spock beam down. They each pipe in their complaints. Head council guy suggests they let one of his men beam up and then after refuses again to let Spock beam down. So they beam that guy down. But Spock saves the coordinates this time. Kirk tries using the ship's instruments to get a hold of somebody, but he can't. So he flips a couple of the hard disks around to take them out of warp which is something I hadn't seen before. But Adana says it feels the same, and Kirk is starting to grow suspicious, because it does. I know every sound that this ship might make. That's coming from outside. A storm might... A storm might. But you wouldn't be able to hear it. Odonna is fascinated by beauty. Her simple nature is adorable. Kirk asks... Odonna, can you... remember... Why your people dream of being alone? Because they never can be. Overpopulation. She says no one commands Odonna, but that isn't entirely true, is it? Kirk asks her questions oddly, and we see people watching them from the view screen, but then it disappears again. Kirk talks about a random bruise he has, and then he notices a sound coming from outside the ship, so they go to a random viewport and look outside, and a bunch of people are just standing so closely together. We see a shot of outside where all the people in the streets can barely move and walk past each other and we see the council is watching Kirk and O'Donna and she starts talking about sickness and death and starts sweating. Kirk picks her up and carries her when the council shows up. Apparently the experiment is past stage one and a couple of guys have to watch Kirk now. We find out that the ambassador dude has let his daughter get infected and that they don't really know what pain is. Well guess what? She does now. She has vegan meningitis. It's very rare and always fatal if not treated within 24 hours. Kirk had it once, and it's still in his blood. And they took the microorganisms out of him and infected her with his blood. Permission denied. Admiral, I wish to state for the record that your decision is completely arbitrary. So noted. Spock gets stonewalled by Starfleet and notices that the coordinates that they just beamed the guy down to and the ones they provided Kirk with when he beamed down earlier were different. So he beamed down. Kirk argues with the leader of Gideon because his report was a tissue of lies. Everybody on that planet is pretty much immortal. Their bodies regenerate. Yeah, it was once a paradise, but the overpopulation has destroyed that. Kirk tries to guilt him for killing his daughter, but they want to use it to kill more. Their whole plan, the entire council's plan, was to get Kirk to fall in love with Odana and then stay and sacrifice himself to help kill half their population. 
Spock's on the bridge killing time, noticing that this ship is an exact duplicate of the Enterprise, except that it's empty. He calls Scotty and tells him the same thing, but then apparently he makes a ship log to tell us what's going on. They think Odana's death is going to inspire many young volunteers to carry disease and kill many on the planet and make it a paradise again. Um, space travel would do the same thing. Spread yourself out among the stars, build some colonies. I wish with all my heart to stay with you forever. <sighs> Kirk talks to Odana who's in love with him, and it's hard for Daddy to watch. Spock shows up, nerve pinches a guy, and then throws another guy who doesn't recover from it. Maybe he fell on his keys. That can hurt. Well, he finds Kirk and he tells the ship three to beam up. Back on the ship, Bones cures Odonna, but the disease is still in her blood. Kirk says a couple of smooth lines and she says she has to go back down the planet and do her duty. And that's the end. So she's gonna go back down there and use her blood to infect others and wipe out the population of the planet. As crowded as my planet is, I could wish for it to hold one more person. Director Transporter Control, one to beam down to the planet Gideon. Like, what the fuck? This episode ends with genocide being a solution to Gideon's problems and Kirk and Co. accepting that. That's pretty dark. Odana is the daughter of Ambassador Godin and Beta Cannon tells us fuck all. And how does Gideon even have an exact replica of the Enterprise? Yeah, this episode leaves us with a lot of questions and morality issues, but O'Donnell did love Kirk, and Kirk, you know, cared for a girl like he does in everything, so she doesn't rank up too high as a love interest. Maybe the next one will. Until then, thanks for watching. I only know I'm here. I only know I'm happy. <laughs>